besides transmissions and symptoms. Okay, hi everyone. Okay, by a show of hands, who here has ever had the flu? Okay. Our group got ARI's transmissions and symptoms. My name is Drew Campbell Adams. I'm Graciela de la Cruz. My name is Yancy Hernandez Sanchez. I'm Sage Graham. I'm Daniel Hussein. I'm Rafael Nobleman. I'm Jasmine Hanna. Today, we will be talking about ARI's. ARI's are a bacterial or viral infection that happens in the upper or lower part of the respiratory system. It mostly affects people who are under the age of five and elderly people due to their age and they're possibly not fully up to scope immune system. So symptoms are based off of many factors like age, your diet, how old you are, and maybe your, what exercise you have. Treatment is based off of many factors like what type of AR you have, which will be touched on by another group. When it comes to transmissions, uh, there's various different ways that can be spread. The most prominent way of the virus is being spread is through airborne transmission. This happens when anybody coughs or sneezes and then the droplets from those actions go into the air and then they are inhaled. Uh, another way of spread is through um, direct contact and this happens when the particles from coughing or sneezing get onto objects and then other people touch those. Um, when they touch them, they can uh, transmit the particles into their mouths. Um, some of the main like fomites that are used to spread these uh, infections are when you share utensils, light switches, doorknobs, and just any other thing that you touch on a daily basis. Uh, the environment somebody is in also plays a crucial part in the transmission of ARIs. For example, people who live in hotter climates, hot climates can damage bodily functions, which results in like severity within the ARIs that may not be present if they were in a more temperate climate. Air pollution as well can damage the lungs, which in turn causes ARIs to be worse, and which is um, a major problem in places like Nigeria and other sub-Saharan African countries. Um, exposure to various other factors, such as close proximity to other individuals. For example, people who live in small close-knit villages or in very like large um, households. Uh, due to close proximity, and if somebody in that community gets infected, there's a higher chance of another individual in that community to also be infected. Um, people who also live next to groups of fungal colonies have a high chance of being infected with ARIs and can also make ARIs worse because the spores from the fungi can go in and uh, damage the lungs as well, resulting in a worse ARI and possibly less chance of survivability. So we will be continuing on with upper ARI, specifically the symptoms. One of the main symptoms is the upper uh, respiratory system being affected. This also includes the nose, mouth, and larynx area. And to add on to that, um, that also leads to problems such as difficulty of breathing. Some examples of illnesses when you can experience these symptoms are influenza, the rhinovirus, and common cold study Next is the lower ARI infections. These symptoms can include chest weakness, coughing with phlegm, dizziness, congestion, harsher breathing, and sometimes even a bluish hue to the skin from air not traveling fully through the respiratory system. Lower ARIs affect the lungs, diaphragm, and trachea. Common lower ARI infections that you've probably heard of are bronchitis, pneumonia, and whooping cough. Now our community workshops serve to educate people about the transmission and symptoms associated with ARIs. These um, workshops are aimed mostly at children, but teenagers and adults are also greatly encouraged to participate and watch, so that way they can also use their life experience to help teach the children. We try to teach these children young so that way they can develop healthy habits and be able to use their skills in identifying ARIs sooner in um, their adult lives as well, and they can apply that to real life experiences.
for example, our photo bingo, our first workshop, um, is used to make connections to symptoms typically associated with ARI, such as difficulty breathing. This, it shows pictures on there, it will be further elaborated on. Our spray tag bingo, our second, or not bingo, <laughs> our spray tag, um, it serves to visualize the spread of ARIs and how well we can't see them in this activity, they can. And our handouts are made to be easy to understand and offer up extra information to anybody who may require it. As Sage mentioned before, for our first workshop, we will be playing photo bingo. This first workshop is targeted towards the younger audience so that they can learn and understand the different forms of symptoms and transmission, so ARI. Uh, for the photo bingo, we decided to put images so that the younger audience can understand as some of them not, may not necessarily know how to read quite yet. We also included um, many different like forms of symptoms and transmission. Some of them sneezing and like wearing a face mask, washing your hand, proper hygiene, stuff like that. Uh, we wanted for the facilitators to randomly, ra randomly explain and say out loud these symptoms and forms of transmission. And once the players hear these different forms of symptoms and transmission, they will place a small object on each of the squares and the game will finish once someone in a column of five or in a row of five correctly have them. Um, our next exercise or workshop is infection spray tag. This essentially is where all the participants will wear a white shirt and there will be two bottles of, two spray bottles filled with red dye water. And it's basically a game of tag where two people will go around spraying people and once someone gets sprayed, they'll only get the bottle of being infected and it keeps going until everyone is either tired or 15 minutes have passed. This shows, the purpose of this activity is to show the spread of how quickly the droplets can move from one person to another through like the red on the shirts. And it also shows how the, uh, the air droplets can move through the air without us seeing it, but it can like land on surfaces and onto people. The main age the demographic for this uh, workshop is children, but also teens and parents can come to facilitate or play if they want to. When creating our workshops, uh, we were devoted $500 to make up to four activities, and we decided to use $100 for two of our activities. Um, our first activity used up $75, most of it being the white t-shirts, and then the rest being the spray bottles and food coloring. For the photo bingo, we used $25, uh, 10 of it being for the bingo cards, five for the bingo tokens, and then we will hand out 40 infographics, two per participant, so that they can then hand it off to either a family member or a friend. The remaining balance, which is $400, will be donated to the Nagari Medical Clinic, and they will use the funds to buy masks, sanitation devices, and even throw swabs. Okay, so this is the infographic that we made, titled Symptoms and Transmissions of ARIs. We wanted this to be aesthetically pleasing because our target audience are parents and children. Um, this was made with the intention of being posted in public so people can you know, take it and give it to someone else, okay? So at the top we have transmission and then common, common symptoms followed by prevention and then etiquette. You see the guy covering his cough or his knees directly into his elbow. And then last we have the check mark which says want to seek medical help, basically informing uh, people who have this infographic to be aware that sometimes it could be more serious than an ARI. And these are our resources here. Thank you for listening.